Oh. And get some of that body noises on video. Body noises on video. Hey, I bet if we started that YouTube channel, it would be like a big hit. All right. Okay. Hit it. Hold on. Nope. Hit it. Where? Hit it. Go. Where does the Bible say sex before marriage is wrong? That's the question which inspired our brand new series, Premarital Sex in the Scriptures, right here on Love Ed with Julie and MJ. As we already admitted last week, there's nowhere in the scriptures that explicitly prohibits premarital sex. But let's be real. There's nowhere in the Bible that explicitly prohibits child pornography. Or sex trafficking or sexual harassment. But we don't have to read the exact words in the Bible to know that something is wrong. We can assume some things are condemned in Scripture based on other sins that are condemned in Scripture. But even still, we have to remember the Bible is not primarily about do's and don'ts. It's about a relationship between God and His people and our relationships with each other. In other words, those do's and don'ts are meant to lead us into life-giving relationships with God and others. Yeah, likewise, sex, (laughs) newsflash, was never meant to be about do's and don'ts. It was meant to be about relationship, a very particular relationship called marriage. And once you grasp the biblical meaning, purpose, and significance of sexual intimacy inside of marriage, then things like sex trafficking or child pornography clearly appear as gross violations of that picture. And so is premarital sex. This is why Hebrews 13.4 says, Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterous. That's probably the closest you're going to get to the Bible saying, Sex before marriage is wrong. Yeah, but it doesn't really say that. No, but it says God will judge the sexually immoral. Yeah, but the only one of the Ten Commandments that relates to sexual immorality only really prohibits adultery, which is having sex with someone else's spouse. But God says he will judge the adulterous and the sexually immoral. Yeah. And the Greek for sexually immoral is a parnos or porneia, and it basically refers, to a generic term, that refers to someone who engages in sex outside of marriage in general, which would probably include sex before marriage. And that fits with the beginning of the passage where it commands, let marriage be held in honor among all. All. In other words, all means all. (laughs) And that's the beauty of the command. It's calling all of us to honor marriage, to save sex for the marriage bed. For married people, this means enjoying sex only with their spouse. For unmarried people, this means waiting until marriage. And in honoring marriage, God is not trying to limit our enjoyment of the gift of sex. He's trying to protect it. There's a difference. On a cultural level, the devastation caused by married people failing to keep the marriage bed pure is obvious. Broken vows, broken homes, broken marriages. Yeah, but it's harder to see the problem with premarital sex because other than an unplanned pregnancy, the consequences are not as immediate nor as direct. That was certainly true for us. But dude, yes, and Julie and I were virgins on our wedding day, but we were not sexually pure. We're glad we held on to our virginity, but the fact is all the making out and messing around we did when we were dating <sighs> came back to haunt our marriage. Seven, ten years into our marriage. It, it created relational patterns and established sexual expectations Uh, that caused frustration and disappointment, not only in our sex life, but in multiple facets of our relationship. But don't take our word for it. Take God's word for it. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed remain undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterous. 
Now, this isn't the only biblical passage that speaks to premarital sex. No, in fact, there's this one thing that Jesus himself said that applies to the matter, and we'll talk about that next week. Join us then as we continue our current series, Premarital Sex in the Scriptures, on Love Ed, Okay, so we just wanted to tell you that we filmed this whole video in the room with a bird, and it wasn't until the end that we, we totally forgot the bird was even here. Oh, yes. And Disco never made a peep through the whole video. Disco's a good bird. Disco is a quiet bird. Turn, turn left. They're, they're, you're, you're famous. Disco is a pretty bird. Do you know how many people see this? <laughs>